Hey ladies and gents, it's Zembeck, and we're going to do a tactics video, actually a map tactics video. Um, and I just usually do these for for tanks, um, but I thought we'll do one for planes, because these are one of the biggest pain in the asses, ass maps, I should say, uh, is these asymmetrical maps. Most maps in World of War planes are symmetrical. Uh, you know, one side gets two, the other side gets two, and there's usually one in the middle, or there's two on one side and two on the other side, or vice versa, the distances are all about the same. However, there is a few maps uh, that have this f fucked up scheme on them, uh, which is essentially a command center to the north and two objectives to the south, an air base and a garrison. And these have caused problems, people get pissed, uh, you know, it's like, ah, oh, it's immediate loss, all that kind of stuff. However, there is a little bit of strategy involved here to kind of um, help you out here. And this is one of the lower tier maps. I'll work my way up through some of the other asymmetrical maps. Not necessarily asymmetrical, but uh, at least by objective-wise, uh, they're kind of fucked up. But this one is actually just a completely asymmetrical. It's not, not, a, not a symmetrical map, uh, considering one side gets one and the other side gets two. Uh, generally speaking, there's you know uh, there's really two ways to, to, to take this map. So either uh, when you spawn on the south, you're going to try to defend these two, or you're going to try to take these two and then try to push to the north. Um, usually from spawn, uh, you have to remember that when the command center is taken to the north, uh, the bombers will attack the first objective that you take in the south. So which of the two uh, between the garrison and the airfield would you uh, rather have attacked. Uh, typically I don't have a problem uh, with the garrison if I have to sacrifice it. I'd rather have the bombers take out the garrison and not the airfield. So uh, with that said I usually head over to the garrison first uh, and try to take that and turn that blue before the airfields. That way the enemy um, command center bombers head that way and not the airfield. However uh, once the command center to the north is taken, uh, any attack planes or bombers at that command center will immediately head to the first objective that you take in the south. Uh, so once again, uh, the garrison is, is, is the preferred choice. Um, any of the red planes that spawn that are light fighters, multi-rolls, or heavies uh, have a tendency to gravitate to the airfield. They'll never go to the command center for the most part. Uh, they usually, as soon as they spawn from the north, they'll head to the airfield. So if you have a flight partner splitting up uh, someone to get over there and get that airfield defended and trying to knock out as many red planes as you can. Uh, so there's a kind of an argument there whether or not uh, which one's more important to me. I personally rather rather have this force split up a little bit. Um, uh, dealing with a bunch of planes at the airfield and then have a bomber formation going there at the same time plus all the attack fighters uh, yeah that could be a little much so garrison seems to be the better choice of the two taking the garrison first will kind of split the forces up uh, of the red team uh, the enemy bomber formations the attack planes and the enemy actual bombers will head to that garrison first so once you take the garrison there, then immediately, of course, you want to get to the blue garrison. Uh, if, of course, if you, you know, really helps on this map if you have some competent human players and heavy fighters, uh, health two planes, that kind of stuff. If you're just going to be a low turn and burn kind of aircraft, uh, it's pretty hard to attack on this map without that altitude in those big guns. So the most, for the most part, if you're uh, on the bottom spawn and if you're just in a turn and burner. Uh, you're going to be wanting to just pretty much defend these two objectives and not really worry about that uh, northern uh, objective if you can help it. Of course, once you take the northern, the southern garrison, uh, the, the, your blue attackers are immediately going to turn north and head toward the northern objective. Uh, attack planes, bombers, they're going to head directly toward that. They're not going to give a shit whether or not you have the airfield or not. They're going to immediately turn and go that way. So there's a couple different ways. So if you're if you're at the garrison and you take it and you're lucky enough to have a, somebody on the other side take the airfields, what you're going to want to do is try to get out into the middle of the map and start picking up their incoming planes, uh, attack uh, the attack uh, the attack aircraft, the bombers and whatnot. You want to try to get them out of your garrison. 
Uh, of course, the enemy bomber formation is going to be coming in. And you're going to see in the video what I'm talking about. You only have to take out one or two of those uh, to try to keep them from taking your garrison. Uh, but for the most part, if you can defend it through at least two bomber flights, uh, you can hold on to these two objectives in the, in the bottom, and you can defend it against at least two bomber flights, uh, most likely you're going to win because you're going to be learning uh, winning uh, double objective points. Of course, this also depends on how fast they take the control center to the north. Um, sometimes you might have to go up to three or even on the outside four bomber flights uh, to keep the southern objectives. But you want to be outside of the objective trying to shoot down the red planes before they get there because you know the attack planes are going to be heading there, you're going to know the bombers are going to be heading there. So you kind of want to intercede on that. Same way with the, uh, air, the um, airfield. Once you turn it, once you knock out that first initial wave of fighters, you want to be catching them out in the center of the map and not over the objective. Uh, it's just like any other typical uh, map. You want to try not to fight over your own objective because, of course, you die. Uh, it's easier for them to turn. But this is even more important in this in this match, uh, trying to hold on these two objectives. So, yeah, that's kind of the uh, tactics involved. Um, even if they do take one of the objectives, uh, say they get a bomber flight through to the garrison, uh, be close. Uh, you want to turn that back as quick as possible. If you can turn that objective, uh, you know, as soon as they turn it red, you have 30 seconds before everything respawns. But if you can get it back within that 30 seconds, uh, you're that much farther. You just got to keep those two blue objective, those two objectives on your side, constantly uh, cr uh, creating objective points. So even if you do lose one, don't lose, don't lose heart. Just keep flipping them back as quick as possible. Same with airfield. Keep flipping them back as quick as possible. If they can't take one of the objectives uh, for an extended period of time, you're going to win. Uh, I mean, if, if you can hold on to those two objectives for most of the game, you know, occasionally losing one is not a big deal as long as you turn it right back again. And that's where a lot of people get upset and frustrated about this kind of uh, map is, is that, you know, they, they get busy, they get wandered off, they, they start chasing shit, uh, but if you don't have to do that, if you can just keep these two objectives rolling and can keep flipping them back, it's pretty easy to defend them, actually. You know, you can flip from one side to the other. If you're in a flight, you can have one guy at the uh, one objective and I have the other objective. And just keep that objective uh, constantly blue as much as possible. Even if you lose it for a minute and a half, it's not a big deal. As long as you can keep it blue, you're, you're, you're building more objective points than the red team. They have to take one objective. Uh, to win the game and if you can keep both objectives uh, 75 80 percent of the time you're going to win the game so it's kind of relatively uh, it's a sucky map for the south to a certain degree uh, but there's a lot more pressure on the north to take one of the objectives so you're going to watch in the video what i'm talking about and uh, hopefully this kind of clears some up uh, leave the comments down below if you guys have uh, you know figured out this even better than i have or uh, you know, you got a better idea than I do. Uh, leave them down below, and uh, we can uh, hopefully have a little discussion about it. So, bringing up the first video for you guys to uh, take a look at. All right, guys, back with the first part of the video, and we are on the northern objective. I'm just doing this to show you the general spread of how the bots operate here. Uh, light fighters all pretty much head south. Uh, usually, sometimes the heavy fighters, they kind of got a weird mix there. But, yeah, heavy fighters, multi-rolls. Uh, and light fighters. If it's definitely for sure for a light fighter, they'll most likely head south. Um, unless this one right here that got caught a whiff of these boomerangs came with me. But for the most part, the, the, the light fighters are going to head south. And that's going to leave you the GAs here too. So you want to try to turn this objective relatively quickly. Um, get down on here and get the first boomerang up. Uh, my GAs are working over uh, the ground targets here. Pick up the first boomerang. Knock him out. And we're going to pick up the second one here coming through. Knock him out. And we, like I said, picking up the objective here as quick as possible uh, definitely works out to your advantage. So, just one more to go, and the fucking boomerang kills my JU-87G. I don't know, it's like they know I'm trying to make a video on this, so they're just bound to fuck you over. But anyway, uh, pick up the other boomerang, and now that I've... Uh, I lost that GA, I, I, I can't turn the objective, uh, so I'm just going to loiter here a little bit uh, until these two pick up the um, the final 
damage here. So like you said, it's here that you can see the spread here. You can see where the GAs are headed. You see where the light fighters head. Uh, and this is just for, of course, bombers. You can't predict humans. Uh, for, for all I know, they're going to fucking go over the corner there and jerk off and uh, fly in circles. Um, but for bots, they're pretty uh, easy to figure out. And, uh, yeah, that's that. this is going to go, like, hopefully a long way into understanding how best to win this map. So I'm just helping out the GAs here by knocking out some AA targets for them uh, so they're not... Uh, getting beat up too badly. Pull back around, and I'm also looking for, of course, the respawn on the uh, the uh, enemy fighters. So what we talked about in garage. The very first objective that they turn, the red team turns. That's where your bombers are going to head. Same way with the uh, blue GAs. They're going to head toward that garrison because that was the first objective. They're not going to head, of course, to the uh, airfield because that hasn't been turned. Uh, everybody's heading south. So this is something you got to remember if you're on the bottom side, uh, as soon as the objective is turned, uh, you're going to have an income, incoming flight of bombers, attack planes, and uh, these bot bombers coming from the command center are all going to be streaming directly toward that first objective that you've taken. So, uh, like I said right here, uh, once that south objective is taken, it frees up the uh, enemy attack planes and the uh, enemy bombers, and they start immediately heading towards your uh, command objective. Uh, you want to, of course, either uh, attack these and try to knock them out as quick as possible, because you're, you know, you want this continually uh, running up bombers uh, to help you take these southern objectives. So pick up the JU-88As. I'm not going to chase them all the way over the objective. Uh, I'm more interested in these two uh, attack planes that are coming down here. I typically, if I do get the northern objective, uh, I do have a tendency to roll with the um, the bombers uh, to protect them as much as possible. And really the key in this map, as far as I'm concerned when it comes to dealing with enemy planes, is not at all, fight at all inside the objective unless you're trying to take it. Uh, if you have a blue objective, you want to stay out of it as much as possible. Um, so, you, yeah, picking up these attack planes way out here uh, instead of inside your objective is, is definitely beneficial. Same way with the other side, you want to be picking up the incoming flights uh, so they die outside the objective and you tie them up. Uh, so I'm going to pull back around. i got the XFL-1 down below. And my bomber flight is almost over the red objective. Uh, so they're going to be dropping their bombs shortly. And whatever they don't get, if, if by chance they don't get a, a complete turn of the objective, I'm right here. Uh, to knock out a few planes. So I'm boosting up here to see if I can pick up some bow fighters. Uh, they're not interested. Uh, the bombers have dropped now and you can see that the objective is slowly turning uh, to the blue. Now what happens, uh, and this is what you really like, what, what's really nice about taking the, this objective here to the south is that you're going to draw off uh, the attack planes and the uh, fighters to that objective. They're not going to go north anymore. The only thing that's going to go north, strangely enough, uh, is the bombers. Uh, the bot red bombers will continue to f go to the north objective no matter what. However, the attack planes and the light fighters will now go solely to the garrison. Um, much easier to defend uh, the, the northern garrison, the northern command center, if all the bots are focused on this garrison. So it's kind of a little key part of uh, winning the game uh, is keeping this either this garrison or keeping the airfield honestly the airfield is more in my opinion more important uh, but if you can't take it right off the bat uh, holding two gears uh, holding two objectives is far more important than holding one you will lose if you can't take at least one of these southern objectives so now that I've picked up this objective and it's just a matter of just shooting some shit down uh, now that they've flipped the second objective, they've, they've actually flipped the airfield objective, now the bombers have respawned and they're headed to that objective. Uh, which of course, if you know the game, uh, those bombers are going to start drawing off enemy planes. Uh, which works out pretty nice because we're, they're, they're spawning in the north and are flying almost uh, totally unopposed until they get to the south. Uh, so unless the enemy uh, is paying attention, uh, they're not going to get beat up until they get closer to this objective, 
where of course you can intercept uh, the enemy fighters uh, before they can get to your bombers uh, and all that stuff. I mean that's some that's some of the strategic value of taking the command center right off the bat. So with that said, uh, you guys are kind of getting what I'm thinking. Of, uh, what I'm trying to maybe you are, maybe you're not getting what I'm trying to explain here. But uh, yeah, at least to give you an idea, some strategies and some tactics uh, to uh, win this. Uh, oddball asymmetrical map. So I've got the other side for you uh, and you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Alright guys, back with the second part of the video and this is the south spawn. Uh, I got Outward, Outward Panic Joe with me from uh, the Special Forces Clan. Uh, he's running the north objective for me um, to kind of give you the, get this video working here. So uh, I immediately turned to the garrison and we talked about this in the garage or the hangar uh, about um, the bot the bot bomber force uh, have a tendency of course to go to the first objective that's turned uh, and I'd rather have them head here than of course having to deal with um, them going after my uh, air base so I want the garrison turned right away here and I'm flying around here trying to pick up many fighters as I can uh, of course they're shooting down my bots uh, because you know they're bots so, uh, pick around on the bullfighter here. Let's see if I can get him finished off quickly here and see if I can get this objective up and running. Uh, Joe's working on the north objective so I can get this video done uh, and get the bomb, get the bombers up and running for me. So, pick up the bullfighter, finish him off. And now you've noticed here, uh, this seems to be the general location where all the GAs on my team, the bot GAs, will go immediately to. They don't go to their field, they go to the garrison. So they picked up the garrison. And now you'll see my uh, attack planes um, start heading north. Uh, they're going to go directly toward the command center. Now that we talked about this earlier, there's either you know you can either defend or they attack. Uh, in this situation, you probably want at least uh, one or possibly even two planes going with those attack planes, uh, and see if you can turn that objective. Um, yeah, especially if that northern objective doesn't get turned right away, and you're starting to get up on points. Uh, yeah, it's always a good thing. So I'm going to pull in here. I really want this objective. Uh, pick up the Falk Wolf uh, 190. Put some shells into him. I think I almost got him, but I don't quite get him. Go cool figure. Leaves him on, yeah, one hit point. Fuck you. Uh, there we go. Uh, pick him up. Now I got the boomerang going around. Let's see if I can knock him out quick and turn this objective around for us. Okay, so now we got both objectives and. Once I said, like I said, once you get these both objectives up here, uh, the light fighters are going to continue to stream uh, into here. Uh, that's what they do. So, pick up the lag three. We're going to knock him out. And you can see right now, uh, the attack plane and the heavy fighter that we're going north has already picked up an attack plane, the red attack plane heading south. Uh, and he's headed directly toward my uh, the first objective that was taken. So, like I said, remember this. Th this is important, how the, these bots operate. Um, so we're going to clear out the A6M2, clean these guys out, uh, and you know you could just simply have a light fighter if you're in a human, simply just stay right here uh, and defend this airbase. Uh, same way at the other side if you can get somebody over there to defend that airbase. Uh, so finally uh, Joe's got the command center up and running and of course now we're getting the, uh, the bots headed this way. Um, you can see that the one attack plane is already headed here, the other attack plane is also coming this way too. And this is what I was talking about earlier, uh, about engaging targets outside of the objective. Um, we want to get the fight out here in the middle of the map and not over the objective. Uh, so I'm going to be pulling over here. Uh, I have one of two things, you know, if, if you're a human pilot, you're going to be wanting somebody down there shooting down those uh, GAs. Uh, and at least one, you know, maybe even possibly two of these people over here, especially if you're, this is what I was talking about, a plane dependent. Uh, if you're a heavy fighter or a um, energy fighter with some uh, with some altitude performance, you want to be up here knocking out these incoming planes. So I'm going to knock out the Ju-88 before he gets there. Uh, that's kind of an important thing. Uh, if I can knock him out, he's not going to be damaging that um, objective, uh, which means I don't have to kill as many bombers uh, to keep it. Right? Uh, this. But this force of five bombers, if they all drop, will turn an objective. Um, if it's full health, uh, if I only not if I knock out one, uh, they typically won't turn it. If I knock out two, they definitely won't be able to turn it. 
So you don't have to knock out the whole bomber formation, but you got to knock enough of it, enough of it out uh, that they're not going to be able to turn the objective. Of course, I'm flying the DB-605, so I have no problem to be up at this altitude. Uh, if you're in a freaking Spitfire or, uh, you know, a uh, Zero, specifically, more probably more is the Zero and the KI lines, those non-altitude performing uh, shitbags, uh, you're going to have a hard time dealing with bomber formations. Uh, you're going to have to so solely depend on your team to take care of them. So by knocking out two bombers, uh, I'm having a pretty good chance that they're not going to be able to turn this objective. Three is even better because they've already turned a little bit of the garrison, uh, and you're going to see me here drop in on this last bomber. Uh, now that I've got uh, the three out, this will be the third bomber, I don't have to worry about me losing this objective. Um, pick him up. Now, what you're going to see me do here is, see how the HSS is right down here? The bombers are starting to drop, and they're going to slowly start turning the objective. There's the first one. See how it starts to turn real slow? If I kill an enemy plane while they're, while the bombs are dropping, uh, I can start turning back the, uh, the objective to blue. Uh, so they've already dropped. See, they dropped again. And uh, now that I've got the other IL-2 in here, uh, by knocking him back, it turns it back again. Uh, so it's kind of a little bit of a, you know, if you can get a couple red targets in here while they're dropping bombs, and you can kill them while they're dropping the bombs, uh, you can start turning back the objective uh, so they, they can't take it. Uh, that's a little kind of a tactic thing. Uh, remember that if you got a couple GAs in there and you see the bomber formation come, um, as long as you can keep that... Uh, as long as you can keep knocking out the red planes as they're bombing, uh, you're going to keep, you're going to, you're going to try to keep that blue circle, uh, you know, obviously, uh, as full as possible. So, uh, by killing them in the circle while the bombs are dropping, uh, you're, it's going to go a long ways to keeping that thing blue. So I picked up one more bomber, dropped him off. If I can get one more, there's a pretty good chance I can keep this objective. I don't have to kill all of them. I just got to kill enough of them. Uh, that they can't take out uh, roughly two-thirds of my uh, my objective. So I almost got him. He's just about dead. He's over the objective. And don't finish him off, uh, but that's all right uh, because there isn't enough of them to take the objective. So pull up straight up here, pick up the JU-88, just to make sure I'm going to knock out the, try to knock out the JU-88 so we don't... Uh, you can see how much the objective has turned uh, by knocking this guy out. It's going to turn it back more blue. There we go. See, so it's something to remember when when you're when you got a bomber formation that you're trying to deal you're trying to deal with uh, over that objective, uh, being able to knock them out as they're bombing can can sometimes be the difference between a win or a loss. Uh, so essentially, what you want to be like I said, the tactics of this thing is you want to. Keep the fight out away from your objectives as much as possible. Intercept uh, incoming bombers, intercept incoming attack planes, and of course intercept the incoming light fighters on the airfield part of it. Uh, that's kind of found to be kind of a a little bit easier way to win this map uh, on this uh, asymmetrical is keeping the fight into the center of the map as much as possible and not letting them get to your objectives. Uh, of course, that's kind of the which you should be doing in every map, uh, but it seems to be w far more important in these asymmetrical maps uh, of not fighting over uh, the objective. So thanks for watching, guys. Leave the comments down below if you guys can uh, come up with something better than this. Uh, I'm definitely, uh, definitely interested. So have a good night, guys.